Hello everyone. Rule number 10, Aung Nangasi. Hi fellows, hope you all are doing good. This presentation contains scientific content which is easy to comprehend and to keep up with. My topic is bioenergetics. So what is bioenergetics? But as we know, bio means life or living. Energetic means study of energy. Here is the definition. The study of the transformation of energy in living organisms is called bioenergetics. I'm on the next slide which is about the goal. The goal of bioenergetics is to describe how living organisms acquire and transform energy in order to perform biological work. Above it is a picture which shows that producers get energy from sun in the form of photon and transfer it to the decomposers and consumers. This energy currency in the cell. This is the next slide about concept of free energy. As we talked earlier that concept of free energy is necessary to understand the phenomena of bioenergetics. This concept is first developed in 1870s by Willard Gibbs. Free energy refers to the amount of energy available during a chemical reaction to do cellular work. Free energy is also referred as Gibbs free energy on the name of scientist Willard Gibbs who developed it. Gibbs free energy is a thermodynamic quantity which can be used to determine if a reaction is spontaneous or not. Next slide is explaining Gibbs free energy very much. Firstly, recalling the definition that it is the useful energy in a system expresses the amount of energy capable of doing work during a reaction at a constant temperature and pressure. It is written as G is equal to H minus Ts. As mentioned above, energy in a system. So I'm going to tell you about the system. There are actually two systems, open system and closed system. In an open system, it can exchange both energy and matter with the surrounding. But in a closed system, on the other hand, can exchange only energy with the surrounding but not the matter. Here is another slide about the concept of Gibbs free energy, where H denotes enthalpy, total energy of the system, S denotes entropy, disorderness of the universe, and T denotes temperature. This equation is written as delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, which means temperature is being extracted from the enthalpy is equal to change in Gibbs free energy. In front of this equation is a picture which explains the process of entropy, disorderness of the universe. Next slide is about standard free energy change, which is explaining that change in Gibbs free energy at standard state condition. It is denoted by delta G naught is equal to delta H naught minus T delta S naught, where delta G expresses standard free energy change, T expresses is usually room temperature which is 298K, delta H naught expresses change in enthalpy and delta S naught is change in entropy. Next slide, objective of bioenergetics. There are following concepts to understand energy flow. These concepts are free energy, entropy, enthalpy, energy rich compound, role of ATP. So here is another slide which is explaining relationship between delta G and delta G naught. As we have discussed both of them earlier that delta G is Gibbs free energy and delta G naught is standard free energy change. First of all as written as at equilibrium delta G Gibbs free energy is equal to zero. The equilibrium constant which is written as KEQ which is equal to the concentration of product CD upon concentration of reactant AB. So here is one more thing that if the value of equilibrium constant is more than 1, it indicates towards a spontaneous reaction and the value of delta G naught prime would be negative. On the next we are going to discuss two types of reaction, exogonic reactions and endogonic reactions. Exogonic reaction is a spontaneous succeeding slide is about the last objective of bioenergetics which is ATP energy currency. So we know that ATP is an energy currency for cellular process. ATP provides energy for both endergonic reactions where energy is being consumed and exergonic reaction where energy is being released. Below is a little diagram of ATP structure. We can see three phosphate groups in this diagram. The bond between second and third phosphate group is highly energetic. When it breaks down, it releases a large amount of energy. So basically these ATP molecules are highly unstable whenever cell requires energy for cellular purpose. ATP breaks down into ATP. Moving to the next slide, which is about energy-rich compounds. What are these energy-rich compounds? Compounds in biological system which on hydrolysis yield free energy equal to or greater than of the ATP. The amount of energy which yields energy-rich compounds on hydrolysis is minus 7.3 calories per mole. These bonds in high energy compounds which yield energy upon hydrolysis are called high energy bonds and these bonds are denoted by symbol squiggle. Listed below are GTP, CTP and UTP. GTP is guanosine triphosphate while CTP is cytosine triphosphate. The last one UTP is uridine triphosphate. Moving to our most slide which is classification of energy rich compounds. Energy rich compounds are classified into five groups. Pyrophosphates, enol phosphates, acyl phosphate, 
thiol phosphates, guanidine phosphates. These highly rich and energetic compounds when breaks down release a large amount of energy. Including this is everything about the bioenergetics.